Mm. Hello, and welcome to Chemical Distraction. <laughs> so today we're gonna be turning this 40% vodka into like 100% uh, alcohol, 99.99. All right, so to start this off, we pour like 20-ish uh, milliliters of vodka. And uh, mm. uh, and then and then we uh, take the party inhibitor off the top of the bottle and uh, we just pour it in. We then uh, add a stir bar and we close it all up. And now we can start distilling the alcohol. FBI, open up! Important thing to note here. Distilling alcohol in the United States is illegal without a permit. Yes, in the country where you can buy a crossbow at Walmart, you are not able to distill alcohol in your own home. So what we're doing today is not for consumption. It is for lab purposes, nor should you even be considering doing this for consumption because all of the equipment that we use is dirty and not food grade. If you're here for legitimate purposes, then we can start by boiling it off. And now we can begin to see the power of the distillation column. Now, you may be familiar with normal distillation, which separates things based off of boiling point, but by adding this column, we actually make this process more efficient. This is because as the column heats up, the liquids condense on the sides and then boil again, creating effectively multiple distillations with one. That makes our products a lot more pure than if we were just to do simple distillation. Now at about 85 degrees, I decided to call it just because the further you push it, the more water you're gonna start to get, which is no bueno. Now, when I tested it based off of density, it was close enough to 95%. So we're gonna go on to the next step. Now, you may be wondering, why did I stop at 95% alcohol and not just do the full 100%? Well, that's because water and alcohol form something called an azeotrope which basically means you can only get it up to a certain percentage, in this case 95, and you can't distill it any further than that. So in order to get that last little bit of water out, we add something called molecular sieves. These are kind of like little sponges that have holes in them that are just big enough for a water molecule to get in, but not big enough for an alcohol molecule to get in. So the water gets trapped inside of these little balls. That leaves us with almost 100% pure alcohol. Now, admittedly, you probably want to wait after distilling it for the alcohol to cool down a little bit. Uh, as you can see, I didn't, and now the alcohol is boiling. That's because when the water gets trapped in the molecular sieves, it produces a little bit of heat. So yeah, go ahead and wait after distilling. So now that we have the alcohol and all these little wet sieves, we can just run it through a filter to get all of the little beads off. So now you'll notice our final product is looking a little bit foggy. It's because these molecular sieves produce a little bit of dust and the dust is sort of stuck in the liquid. So in order to get rid of that dust, we're gonna do another distillation, just a normal one this time. The goal of this distillation is to leave behind all of that solid dust and have the alcohol collect on the other side. You can see after boiling off all the alcohol, we have all this gross dust left behind in the flask. And then we finish up with what should be mostly pure 200 proof alcohol. Like, comment, subscribe. Oh, and uh, don't do this at home. This is just water. <laughs>